Wow. Pick up where we left off at. We hopped on our side by side, the Honda Pioneer, and we headed down the road to the greenest spot that was near. When we arrived at that area, we saw lots of things. But one of the things that really stuck out in my memory was the fact that so many things had changed through time. Like buildings had been there 50 or 100 years ago and were completely gone. Just the foundations remained. Nature reclaimed those foundations and trees were growing among them with ferns and different mosses. And wildlife is the most notable thing. Where we've left parts of our past, our garbage, our waste, things we don't use, wildlife has found a way to utilize and exist among and upon those things. This is one of the interesting species that we actually found with our garbage. I'm Alex, the host of The Great Outdoors. Today we're here in one of the greenest areas in High Springs that's still left. And this used to be a railway station, a railway hub, and since the people left it to the state, and the state acquired it, they haven't actually built anything here at all. But wildlife is taken back over. And right here below me, you see the presence of man's existence. But nature still thrives. And right here, look at this guy on the move right here. Right on this trash bag. It's pretty active. You see that pubescent caterpillar or hairy caterpillar? This is actually the, wool wow, he's a fast one, the woolly bear caterpillar. Now he will eventually turn into a really stunning, beautiful moth. You can find this species on Google under the term yellow bear caterpillar. It has many different common names, the yellow woolly bear caterpillar, the yellow bear caterpillar, the woolly bear caterpillar. It's easy to see why Latin names are so important because many common names are the same for different species. Now the Latin name for this yellow bear caterpillar is Spilosoma virginica, and the Latin name tells a lot about the insect itself. Basically, Latin names help us create a family tree, a web of the way things delineated when they had a common ancestor. Now, Spilosoma virginica could perhaps mean it is in the family Spilosoma like various other caterpillars, most of the woolly bear caterpillars, and virginica could mean it was found in Virginia, maybe West Virginia, I don't know, but it tells something about the creature itself by the Latin name. The caterpillar will undergo metamorphosis and become the Virginia tiger moth. They said it in the name of the moth, the Virginia tiger moth. The species was probably found in Virginia or probably commonly resides in Virginia. Now, you've seen me get stung by several other species of caterpillars. However, I can't say I've ever seen anybody get stung by this species of caterpillar. But it does look like it has urinating hairs, which means it could possibly produce a sting. Now, some of them don't actually sting, but have that hair either to mimic another stinging caterpillar or for other means. I'm not sure. Maybe they've lost the reason for them to need to sting. But today, I will induce a sting from this beautiful woolly bear caterpillar. On the count of three, I'm going to press this woolly bear caterpillar to my forearm. We're going to see just how painful the sting of the woolly bear caterpillar moth larva actually is. Here we go. Oh, this might have just been all hype because I don't feel anything yet, but that does not mean that it can't possibly later on generate. Oh, well, he's or she's it's so it's not shedding the hairs, which I've seen some of the other sting caterpillars do, like the dagger moth caterpillar. And I don't actually feel any irritation yet, but that does not mean that I won't hear in about a minute or two minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and let this guy or girl back go. And I think that a more suitable place would be on this plant rather than that trash bag. Now, it may have been on a trash bag for some reason or another, but I know that these caterpillars eat vegetation and I don't want to eat the trash, so we'll just let it be on its way. Unfortunately, the environment we filmed this today was like it was, but regardless, Still a great find. Some time passed and I had virtually no visible effects from the caterpillar's bristles. This caterpillar didn't actually produce a sting at all, but it would probably give an unsuspecting predator a pretty bad indigestion. This video is just a little grease to lubricate your mind for the series I'm about to release. 
The world is very resilient. The species that we encounter today only exists because of the determination and drive to reproduce through all circumstances. Our world has consistently undergone changes. Some creatures will be suited and will adapt to the changing environments. Like the fossils of our past, some will leave a mark in other ways. This is around the same size as the bumblebee, not bumblebee species. I'm Alexander Debasevich. For several years, I've been searching for the worst stinging insects in the southeast. So much has happened since the last time I released Sting Week 2. Since, we've had DNA sequencing yes. done on the swarm of honeybees to determine oh, yeah. if this European they honeybee hive was in fact Africanized. We found different species that each have their own very unique lifestyle. Some are among us at different points in our lives, while others take a lot more effort to find. Uh, it's raining outside, but that doesn't matter. We gotta find this one. We've encountered many species that I knew very little about. And now, this coming Saturday, we will release Sting Week 3. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up to support our cause. And if you haven't already, subscribe. <laughs> All right, stand back and I'm gonna do the wild thing because that's a good intro to my videos. Wow. All right. All right. All right.